Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we installed a four foot concrete apron in front of this garage. Now this is the homeowner right here. He did the excavation, so he dug out the soil that was there. Put in about a foot of gravel you can see he compacted it now he's putting two inches of styrofoam down under this we live in maine so we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles so he, the styrofoam helps keep the ground from freezing under the concrete that's why they put styrofoam down in maine now this thing's going to be about a foot thick um, i'm not sure why he needs it so thick but that's what he wanted so that's what we're going to do and we're doing a bunch of bunch of concrete projects around here. This is, he's building this new house. He's got a new house there in the background. Garage is on the left. So we're doing a, like a sidewalk out behind the garage, doing this apron. We've got a walkway between the house and garage we're doing, and then another entryway to the house. But in this video, we're just going to go over the apron right here so you can see how to put a concrete apron in front of your garage. Now that we've got the gravel down and the styrofoam down, we're going to put the forms up. We're using 2x12s today, so if we have to hang them up off the ground just a little bit, we will. We're not going to worry too much about a little bit of concrete coming out from underneath them. Um, but we just need a good rigid form, so I'm going to just screw these together. The length of this garage was about 32 feet. And like I said, we're going to come out four feet from it. We're going to put about an inch slope on it away from the garage. And right now I had to notch out around. He had a piece of angle iron sitting there. The angle iron's going to be for, he's going to have some like cultured stone uh, mortared onto his concrete wall. So the stone's going to sit on that angle iron and then they're going to build it up from there. It's kind of what the guy's doing in the background too. He's got all that stone piled up by that mini excavator. So that's kind of what he's using for that. But I'm going to get my, I'll get my side form up here. I'll put it right at four feet and then I can just screw the front form onto that. Which makes it pretty easy so I know I'm exactly four feet out. And then I'll do the same on the other side. We use, we use uh, those metal pins you can see right there. Those are 24 inches. They got holes, a bunch of holes in them so we can screw through. I use two and a half inch deck screws. When we when we uh, do forming, I just we like to be able to unscrew and screw things without having to like yank on it with a hammer with a, like a double-headed 16D nail. We used to use those, and then I mean you don't really get one use out of them before they bend. But these screws we can use over multiple times. You see, Darren likes putting his stakes in at just a little bit of an angle. That doesn't really matter. There were, there was a lot of uh, big boulders. Uh, in the subgrade a little bit too so sometimes when you put those stakes in at an angle they tend to go in a little bit easier and now we're just using the laser to make sure we got the right grade all the way across the front making sure we're an inch lower than his garage floor and what we're doing now is T and Abby are, are gluing up some ISO what we call ISO strip it's an isolation foam and that keeps the concrete from bonding to the the concrete apron from bonding to the foundation of the garage just in case there is ever a little bit of movement and one's not going to damage the other it's about a half inch wide piece of foam and you can buy it they go four inches six inches eight inches we didn't have any 12 inch so we put up two six inch pieces and what the homeowner wanted us to do also is he did want us to drill and pin into the existing just to make sure that this thing never moves up higher than the concrete floor in the garage so I mean if that's if that's what he wants that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna we drilled every two feet put in these 12 inch pieces of just we're just using number four rebar for this nothing nothing crazy we don't we're not using dowels basically we just want to keep the pad from lifting or settling and then we're going to tie a mat or a number four rebar right in there with it. Those are, we, we buy 20 foot long bars. These happen to be steel bars. We also use the gator bars, which are the fiberglass bars. They both work really good. 
and then we tie them together with these little things called wire ties. These are six inch wire ties and the little tool that Darren has called a yo-yo. So he just hooks that into the loops on each side of the wire tie, spins it, and it ties the rebar really tight. These are called slab bolsters. Those come in all different heights too. And they're basically just for what Luke's doing right there. He's just setting the rebar on it. Keep it up off the bottom of the slab. And then we can tie the rebar right to it so nothing moves when we go to pour. I'm going to say we don't do a ton of concrete aprons up here in Maine. You know, most people will just use asphalt and when they pave their driveway. You know, they'll just asphalt right to the garage. Um... We, I mean, we do a handful of them. You can see how thick that concrete is. We're using, we use 4,000 PSI concrete here, and we have air entrainment in Maine. We put air in everything that's exterior, and that just helps a little bit with the freeze and thaw cycles, too. And the slump, I don't know, we're pouring maybe a 5-inch slump today. Pretty, keeping it pretty stiff because number one you know the the less water you put in the concrete the stronger it is the less likely it is to crack um, it'll hold its slope a little bit better and you know the pour really isn't that big so working with a little bit drier slump isn't really that much harder on something this small you can see how much concrete it takes to fill that up it takes takes a while just to fill it up to the top of the form we also had to put a bunch of kickers as you can see to keep the form straight there's a lot of pressure on 12 inches of concrete it's going to want to bow those forms right out so we put in a bunch in in advance and then we got some sitting right off to the side if we need to put some more in and then we got a string we're using on the top of the forms that tells us if we're straight or not so we go by the string and Darren's kind of mag floating right to the top of the foam and to the top of the form. And Luke's kind of in the background with a four foot screed. He's, he's screeding the concrete. Tia's got the DeWalt pencil vibrator there and she's just hitting the edges real quick. Take out any little air pockets. Making sure everything's going to be smooth when we strip the forms. And you know after we're done the homeowner's going to come in and he's going to backfill all this with gravel. Uh, he might leave it down a couple inches for the asphalt, but it's basically it's all going to be it's all going to be covered up afterward as far as the edges go. You can see how nice and neat Darren and Luke are when they when they screed this stuff, and then you know Luke will finish screeding that. If there's any little extra, we'll carry it out back into the s sidewalk slab we're doing. And then we'll just get this bowl floated. And then it's just a matter of, you know, letting it set up a little bit so we can get the finish on it. I'm going to show you that too. Setting the forms to grade on something like this makes it ten times easier though. You know, if your form's up a little bit and you got to work down inside them, then it makes it real difficult to screed. The bull floats right four feet too, so it was it was right the right width. If the bull floats a little bit wider and it's running over the top of the form, it just doesn't seem to bull float as well. It kind of needs to sit right on the concrete itself, and then that helps kind of settle the aggregate after you screed it and bring up some paste to get you a nice smooth finish on the surface. So this was probably about an hour later. It's starting to set up a little bit. We're kind of waiting for the bleed water to to dissipate but it is firm enough it's not it's not that firm but it's it's firm enough to hold its shape now so Darren's just putting an edge on it kind of rounding the edge off a little bit and then the homeowner also wanted to edge the back of it so he could he could put a bead of caulking right in there and just keep water from getting down in between the garage and the apron it had a pretty good the concrete itself, the mix was pretty good. It had a nice pace to it. It was easy to easy to mag, easy to to fill in anything on the surface that the bull float didn't get. You could you could really work up a, a nice paste, a nice cream and get a good finish on the surface. We typically will 
will mag float the surface twice to get a nice tight broom finish. We don't we don't steel trowel or Fresno finish uh, too many exterior surfaces up here in Maine because it's got air entrainment in it. You know, and that when you seal the surface off like that, even before you even if you're going to broom when you seal the surface off with a steel trowel, sometimes you can trap some air under the surface. And that's just going to lead to a blister later on. Versus if you just mag float it. The mag float seems to keep the surface a little more open. And nothing gets trapped underneath it. No no uh, moisture, no air. And then when you run the broom over it like Darren's doing right now. It just helps keep it that much more open. That's just a typical regular concrete broom we get from the concrete supply store. Two footer, we got three footers, we got four footers. I'd say we generally like the two footer a little bit better. It's just lighter. And this is what we'll do. Usually one guy will mag float. And this is the second time over it, so it's getting pretty tight right now. And then the other guy will fall right, right behind him with the broom before that paste starts to dry up again. And then what Darren, he's got a five-gallon bucket in behind him. He'll just kick off, you know, any little paste that builds up on the bristles from the bucket. He can rinse it off if he needs to. There's water in the bucket. If you don't, if you don't kick off that extra paste on the broom bristles, it tends to want to leave like these little concrete balls behind on the surface, which they do break off afterwards, but it just kind of looks like crap while you're doing it so we'll we'll go and just scrape those bristles off using the top of that bucket every every couple times we run the broom across that was just wide enough so Luke could use one mag to kind of lean on and then reach the other end. If it was five feet wide, he wouldn't be doing that. We'd have to get on it with our skids. So four feet's about the maximum. It is kind of hard on the knees though right there. And you don't want to get your knees into the concrete because then they're going to put a dent in it. Then you got to kind of mag that dent out. That doesn't work very good either. Probably between the first time we magged it and the second time, we probably let it set up another 30 minutes to firm right up. Make sure that, you know, most of the moisture was, most of the visible moisture was gone from the surface. Usually the, when it's ready, you know, you can press in with your fingers maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch at this point right here. So it's pretty firm. And you want to make sure you got a pretty tight finish on the on the broom you don't if you broom it too early you're going to get right into the aggregate and the bristles from the broom will just the grooves will be too deep in the concrete it'll be really rough i don't think in you know you're just not going to like that i definitely know the homeowner wouldn't like that here so definitely better to leave it a little bit on the finer broom side than it is the rougher broom luke's going back now we're going to leave the finished edge mark in it so it kind of have a picture frame look some of you guys have a different opinion on that we tend to on most jobs we tend to leave the the edger mark in it it's it's not a real big edger mark but just to give it a little bit of a defined look on the edge and some guys don't they just want to just broom it like darren's doing and leave it like that so i think it's just a preference i don't know let me know what you guys think down in the comments and, or if you do this, what you do, what kind of edger you use. Do you like the wider edgers? Do you use a thinner edger like we do? We've always used those brass edgers from, I don't know if they're from Kraft or Goldblatt or Marshalltown or where they're from, but, you know, we get it right at the supply store. But the, my guys tend to like the brass ones better than the steel ones. So that's what they use. Darren's pulling that broom back at one pace too. He's not stopping. He's not going too fast. You know, he just same pace, same speed, 
all the way across the slab makes it look the same all the way across. Luke, when he's edging that right there, he's keeping the edger nice and flat. You know, the, the good thing about those brass edgers is the fronts of them and the backs of them have a t slight taper upwards, so you don't have to put too much too much pitch on the edger as you move it back and forth. And this was his remedy for getting that back edge. <laughs> he needed something to lean on to, to re-edge that and make it look nice and neat back there. And then I guess he decided that it was just as easy to lean across it and do it. The trick here is can you get back up? Can you push yourself back without falling into it, I guess? So let me know what you guys think. Are you thinking of doing a concrete apron? Um, is four feet wide enough? Would you go wider on your apron if you were going to put one in? And what about the thickness? You think 12 inches thick is, is thick enough for something like this? Really, I think six inches would probably be enough with that same good gravel base and then everything paved around it. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.